Hi guys, Brendan Erdy here with Tech Review by Erdy, and today on Cars and Go Fast by Tech Review by Erdy, we are going to change the oil pressure sending unit out on this 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the 4.0 inline six. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that here in a few moments. But we, first, we're going to go through some tools that you guys are going to need. So stay tuned. Okay guys, well I mentioned before we need a couple tools to do this job. Now, with that in mind, the oil sending unit, let me grab one here. This one happened to be purchased off eBay, but it is a Mopar part. Um, I got the Mopar part number and everything right there stamped on the side of it. And uh, this is an OEM. Um, anyways, this one came for about 12 bucks. I was pretty shocked and happy at the same time I got one so cheap because it's the same price as aftermarket ones, if not less. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is a 27 millimeter or 1 and 1 16th socket, deep socket wrench. This one happens to be an impact socket wrench. I got this one here from Harbor Freight for about 5 bucks. Locally, you can pick these up for about 12 to 19 dollars depending on the quality of tool. Now, the way this fits on this and the oil pressure setting unit is down to the side of the Jeep. On the side with the oil filter, and I'll show you that in a moment, um, but it sticks out of the engine block like this. So if we're on this side here, it's sticking out like this. Uh, I'll probably put it up like that, actually, because of the way the harness attaches to this. Uh, this has some thread lock already on it. Uh, but anyways, like I said, 1 1 uh, or 27 millimeter. Um, it closes in the gap very tightly there. But it's deep enough to where it'll go over the connector spot of the sending unit. So uh, if we go ahead and You'll see how tight that fit is right there. And it is snug as a bug in a rug. Everything's in there and shouldn't break or anything as long as it goes on evenly. I'm going to show you how far down the sending unit is. So this is a little bit of a beast to get into, but it is literally... Oh, get a good shot of it. If you can see here, I'm going to point it up. It is... Literally, this wire here is connected. There it is. So you can see the connector right there. That's how far down it is. You got to get that socket on there, take it off. There's usually a red locker pin that goes across that. You just got to push it this way, um, and it pops out just a little bit. And then you can pull this off. This one's been damaged previously because this is a rebuilt engine. So it's missing the locker on there, and I'm not going to go through uh, just replacing that if I need to. It's pretty snug as it is, and it hasn't disconnected. So um, otherwise than that, I'll do something else to affix it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here, and I apologize for the reflection coming off of the uh, transmission stick there, is we're going to pull the old one off, and you actually got to depress um, a button down here. Here we go. Here's the button here. Okay, I got my connector off, and as you can see, it did have um, space for where the old pin was. Now, let me get back here a little bit where the pin was, and uh, it is no longer there. It used to go right through that section there. Anyways, don't know what happened to that. It's just been MIA. Okay, next we're going to get down in here and use the socket to get off the uh, sending unit from the block. Okay, got the socket on here. I'm go ahead with a small wrench just to see if I can get it going. Okay, yep, coming off nicely. And it would look like it might be easy to get from the bottom, but it's really easier from the top. It looks congested, but trust me, once you get your arm down in here, I could probably just hand tighten this off, or loosen this off now. Yes, it's definitely. Okay, and 
that doesn't uh, really indicate too much there, but whatever, I've been having a problem. At first it used to drop down a lot for my wife when driving, and then after that situation, it went from 40 to 80 PSI. Uh, get me some light in here. I um, can't see the hole. Got it. Now you'll want to do this finger threading first. And you want to make sure this is all the way on. You want you don't want to break the connector. Take your time, patience. Slowly. If you feel resistant, it's probably because the thread lock is doing its job. It is a dry thread lock, so you gotta kind of mush it away as the threads collide. What you don't want to feel is anything snapping. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to finish up tightening this and uh, or view what we did. I'll go ahead and connect it up to the system. Now at this moment here I don't have the battery disconnected since I have the sensor unplugged but I would behoove you to disconnect both terminals just to be on the safe side. Let the uh, ECU and everything reset once you start idling again. All right, guys, unfortunately what happened was we got a bad storm from right through here at the last minute. So I had to uh, duck and cover. Uh, let's go ahead and reattach the battery. <clears throat> Sounds like the Halloween stuff's going on in the valley. Okay, I just wanted to get that tight enough there. That one's very bad. That'll be a replacement later anyways. This is the only get past me kind of situation. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn on our power. All right. A few minutes here, I'll just go ahead and start it up for you guys. All right, with all said and done here, let's get inside and start this up. Now before, my pressure indicator would go all the way up to 80. I should have filmed that, but I was in a rush to get this done before the storm, and that kind of came through anyways. Um, and it would go down to around the 60 area when I get high RPMs going before shifting or whatnot. The lack of power was there obviously too because either the pressure was really indicating too high or just off so bad that God knows what it really was. I didn't use a mechanical pressure to check. So let's give it a start up. Oops. Okay. transmission that's not good at all but anyways uh, looks like the pressure's back to normal and uh, I think we're back in operation so I'll just take it for a little test spin here in a few minutes let it learn its idling process again should be around 900 rpm on this and uh, that's showing about right so um, this is Brandon Erie with Tech Review by Erdy and uh, just a little roadside fix real quick for the old 4.0 liters that are out there. And although this is a 2001, this oil pressure um, sender unit is um, pretty much GM. There's a lot of vehicles out there that have this and a lot of years. It's a very common, common one out there. But you always want to check because the threading might be a little different or something like that. Otherwise than that, I uh, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and share out the video to others so they can learn as well. This has been Tech Review by Erdy with Brennan Erdy. Signing off.